Hello, and welcome to the River Mountain Model Railroad. On this episode, we're going to do a product spotlight. Today's product is the Atlas HO Scale CNCF 5,000 cubic foot boxcar. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let's talk about the prototype for the CNCF 5,000 cubic foot boxcar. As you can see here, there were several thousands of these boxcars built. They were built in Mexico during the 1970s and 1980s, not only for the Mexican railroads, but railroads in the United States and Canada also. There are several unique features for this boxcar that makes them different than other boxcars seen on the rails. As far as the prototype, I don't know why, but ever since I saw a picture of this boxcar, I have always admired it. And as you can see here, this picture um, was uploaded or copyrighted in 2016. Uh, I'm not sure where the picture was taken, but for some reason, ever since I came across this image on the internet, I've always admired that boxcar. And what's funny, even though this is from 2016 and these cars were built in the 70s and 80s, they're still on the rails. Uh, here you can see, although this picture... The reporting, the reporting marks were for the Genesee in Wyoming. This image here, the reporting marks were changed to the Lycoming Valley. But, as you can clearly see, the 661003 is still the same as it is on this one. So, when Atlas came out with their version of the CNCF 5,000 cubic foot boxcar, I just had to have one. And fortunately for me, they came out with a model and reporting marks of a car that I actually admired. I found these on eBay for such a good price, $10 below manufacturer's listed price, I actually bought two. And you can see here, my other road name is Ferromex. So, considering the deal and the price, the fact that I got a car that I admired in the reporting marks that I liked, I couldn't pass up the deal. So, let's go ahead and get this out of the box and take a look at it. A little word of advice on a first time unboxing, and that's for anything you buy, whether it's rolling stock or a locomotive, doesn't matter what manufacturer. Look inside of the box before you start pulling things out. We all know the standard things like couplers, cut lever bars, air hoses, stirrups, grab irons, and everything else. I don't know if you can see in the bottom of the box there, but I can. I already see a stirrup that's broken off. So when I pull this out of the box, I need to be careful that I don't lose that part on the floor because it appears that I should be able to just glue that stirrup right back on there. But like I say, a little word of advice when you guys are unboxing this stuff, make sure you look inside for any obvious defects, uh, broken or missing parts before you pull that out of there. Okay, so let's get this out of the box. We'll get the box out of the way, but as you can see, Atlas uh, sent some literature along with their rolling stock, just like everybody else does. So, obviously, there's warranty information and some instructions, a little bit of detail information. But, uh, yeah, when you get a chance, take a look at that. Standard clamshell. Should be able to just the top separates from the bottom. There is a little bit of a uh, plastic wrap that goes around the box car. So I'm just going to pull this out of there and we're going to set this down. Oh, there you can see the broken stirrup that I could see through the box before I opened it. Uh, here's a little bit of a parts box. So inside of there, we've got some uh, tack boards, some other small parts that uh, 
just in case you're missing someone inside of that. And like I say, there's that stirrup. that I should be, it doesn't look too broken, so I should be able to uh, install that back on there. So let's get this out of the uh, protective wrapping there, and we're just going to put this aside. I'm going to set this down, I'm going to get these uh, box parts out of the way. So what I'm going to do is, let's turn this over to start. Start on the bottom of the car. So let's just uh, flip this upside down. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we'll start on the bottom of the car. We've zoomed in a little bit. So you can see here we have standard free rolling metal wheels with metal axles. Uh, that's a nice feature. You can see we have brake reservoir, triplet valve, brake cylinder, and other various lines and brake rigging details. I actually like the looks of this. This is pretty nice. Uh, I've got the, uh, the car in a little bit of a rotisserie here, or a turntable, depending on uh, if you're cooking or modeling railroads. So. But you can see the details here. Pretty nice undercarriage brake rigging details. Like I said, uh, we got our free rolling metal wheels with metal axles. Uh, the trucks rotate pretty easily. It's a nice stuff for the uh, undercarriage. So let's go ahead and flip the car over. We'll go ahead and get the, this foam rubber out of the way. Set this back down on there. Standard roof and roof detail for the CNCF boxcar. Rotate it around here to give you an idea. The car has a nice paint job with crisp lettering and decals. You can see starting on the right side we have separately applied grab iron, stirrup, data markings, logo, and some other details. On the left side of the car is pretty similar with separately applied grab irons and you can see the broken stirrup there which I should be able to apply very easily. Rotating the car, we'll take a look at the B end, and on the B end of the vehicle, I'm sorry, the B end of the car, you can see that we have separately applied ladders, tack board, separately applied brake wheel, crossover platform, coupler, air hose, coupler cut lever, Rotating around to the other side of the vehicle, sorry, the box car. We have separately applied grab irons, stirrup, data markings, crisp lettering, which is very nice. On the A end of the car, uh, we'll try and give you a little bit of a different view of the separately applied ladders, crossover platform, coupler cut lever, and the air hose. So what we'll do is we'll rotate the uh, box car around to uh, give you an idea or an overall look of the details and uh, separately applied parts. As 
It's a very nice box car. I think Atlas did a good job uh, replicating the prototype. Okay, let's weigh the model. I've got the scale out. See, we're set in the ounce mode right there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this piece of foam to help protect the car a little bit. You can see that that little piece of foam has some weight, so let's go ahead and zero that out. We're still in the ounce mode. Now, according to NMRA, an HO scale 50 foot box car should weigh approximately 4.5 ounces. So when we put this on here, you can see we're a little overweight, uh, but that's a good thing. So even though NMRA recommends that HO scale 50 foot box car to be about 4.5 ounces, uh, you can see it's hovering around 5.15, 5.2 ounces, which is okay. I like my stuff a little bit on the heavy side. It helps track uh, around curves and through turnouts a little bit better, but that's okay. Yeah, it's about 5.2 ounces, which is okay. I like that. Well, that concludes this product spotlight. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something. And as always, thanks for watching the River Mountain Model Railroad.